so much for being with us this week. Thank you. And looking forward to what God says through you. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Well, good morning. Some of you are still sucking in some oxygen. I can see that. But uh, we're here. It's Monday morning. Excited about that. We are trying to have some slides for you, but uh, we are having some cord issues, so we may just have to, uh, to bag those. Uh, I want to ask you a question as we begin this morning. How many of you have a younger sibling who always asked why? All right. Right? A little annoying. Now, another question. How many of you are that younger sibling? All right. <laughs> How many of you still love to ask why questions? All right. Now, if you have why questions, your counselors are trained and prepared to answer them, right? So take all your why questions. In fact, if you can think of why questions, they would love, love to entertain those. You know, it, it really is good to ask why. You know, as, as kids, you know, as children, we, we intuitively learn to ask why. We ask questions. And, and asking why is, is not a bad thing. In fact, it's, it's a very good thing. And I want us to begin with why this morning. As we talk about seeking God, I want us to begin with why. Why, why is it that we should seek God? Why is it that we should have a, a posture in our lives that, that involves seeking after God? I mean, why do we need to do that? And, and in fact, as you think about this subject, you might be thinking, well, why do I need to seek after God? If, it, it doesn't the Bible say that if I know Jesus Christ is my Savior, that, that God lives in me. He, he's with me all the time. You know, in Psalm 139, you know, David reminds us that there's nowhere that we can go and escape the presence of God. Right? He says, whether I go to the highest mountain or I even, if I literally went to the depths of, of hell, he says, there's nowhere that I could go that I can escape the presence of God. So why, why is it that we would seek God if He lives with us? Why would we seek God if He's promised to never leave us nor forsake us? Why is it that we have to seek. And I want us to, to think about that question and those thoughts as we sort of work through our week and, and, and think about that. I want us to, to realize that although God is always with us, if you know Christ is your Savior, if Jesus is your Savior, there's never a moment that God will not be with you. But there will be moments where we are not in tune to our relationship with God. There will be times where we are not as aware of His nearness, not always growing in our relationship with Him and our walk with Him. And that is why we need to seek Him. And I want us to begin with this word relationship. All right, how many of you are familiar with this word relationship? All right, now just somebody tell me this morning, what popped into your mind when I said relationship? Just first thing that popped in your mind. Somebody help me out here. Yes, brother. your brother. All right. Anybody else? Somebody, what, what comes, what just, first thing that came into your mind when you heard relationship? Yes. Dating. Dating. All right. Which we don't allow here, right? <laughs> uh, I may or may not have done a little bit of that when I was a camper, but enough of those stories. Right. All right. <laughs> you know, when I came back as chapel speaker uh, a few years ago, and I, uh, I got a list of the rules, that, and I said, wow, there's a lot of rules. <laughs> but relationship is, is a word that we're all familiar with, right? And we certainly think about human relationships. We think about dating or marriage, our family relationships, right? But relationship's also a word that you've probably used and associated with God, right? We, you, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard the, the idea that we have a relationship with God. In fact, sometimes we use phrases like, it's, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. And we talk about having a relationship with God. And so I want us to explore the nature of, of what it means to have a relationship with God and what that has to do with seeking this morning. And I want us to begin by just looking at one verse. If you have your Bible, and I hope you do, we're going to begin in John chapter 17. And... We are going to look at just one verse there. In John chapter 17, we are given a privilege of, of reading and hearing a prayer that Jesus prayed the night before He went to the cross. 
Right, the night before he went to the cross for you and for me and for the entire world, Jesus prayed a prayer, and he prayed this prayer in front of his disciples. Right, he prayed this in their hearing, and so he prayed to his Father, but he prayed so that they might hear and that they might benefit from hearing his prayer. And in God's providence and his wisdom, God directed John to record this prayer for us. And in that prayer that Jesus prayed, there, there's a key aspect that he prays about that helps us to understand what it means to know God. And it's John 17, verse 3, and I want us to, to uh, read that together. In, in John 17, 3, Jesus, praying to his Father, said, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Just let's, let's just hear that again. He's, Jesus says, now this, this is eternal life, right? And, and we, we, we're familiar with that phrase, eternal life. And Jesus says, this is what eternal life, the life of God in you is about. This is what the life that he came to give us is about. He said, this life is that they would know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The heart of why Jesus came, why he lived, why he died, why he rose from the dead, why he offers and invites us to know him is that we might experience relationship with him. That, that God wired you, he designed you, he created you with the capacity, with the ability to have a relationship with him. Right? And that's, that's a really a mind-blowing thought, isn't it? Like, I, I don't know about you, but when I, when I sort of step back and I think about the vastness of God, the greatness of God, the glory of God, how, how big God is. It's unfathomable how big God is. I mean, when we look at the universe and, and just see the vastness of it, billions and billions and billions of stars, galaxies, right? And, and the Bible says that God not only spoke all of that into existence, but he's named every star, right? That God is so far greater than we could ever begin to comprehend. He's so much bigger than, than we could even begin to imagine. And yet that God, the creator God, desires relationship with us. That God desires relationship with us. And Jesus came and offered us back really what we forfeited, right? What we forfeited through sin by rejecting God and his ways. You know, you have several rules that you have to follow here, right? Would you all agree? All right. And following the rules is good. Shake your heads. Yes. All right. It's good. But God gave Adam and Eve one rule, right? Just one rule. And they couldn't keep that, could they? Right? One rule. Just, you can do whatever you want. Just don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because if you do, you will die. You will experience separation from me. And they did. But Jesus came to offer restoration of that relationship. Now and for eternity. And he offers us relationship. He offers us eternal life. And eternal life is about knowing the Father, about knowing God. Eternal life is about knowing Jesus. Eternal life is an invitation to know God relationally. Now think about that. Eternal life is an invitation to know God relationally. That God desires relationship with you. And that is the heart of seeking because any relationship requires seeking. Right? Any relationship requires seeking. Right? When I first met my wife, right, she happened to come into a meeting, and, and she wasn't even scheduled to be at that meeting, and I was working uh, for uh, the campus pastor's office at the college I attended, and, and I saw her, and I said to my friend I was working with her, I said, who is she? Right? I need to find out more about this one. Right? And, and, and I did. It wasn't stalking, we, but, but I did some seeking. Right? <laughs> some seeking. <laughs> Hey, it worked, all right? I'm not going to argue with it now. But, but I, I did some seeking, right? And, and, and I sought out to get to know her a little bit better. And I would leave the cafeteria, there for, when I started being interested, I would leave the cafeteria on the minute. Because I knew if I left at that minute, and I had a class after that, but I left at that precise minute that I would always pass her on the way to her. And I wanted to make sure that she saw me. Because right? there were other guys in the mix, all right? I, I had to do work, all right? I had to do work. But I did some seeking. But, but not just that kind of seeking. Even in a relationship, even once you're married, you have to continue to seek each other, to seek to know each other, right? To understand each other. Relationship requires seeking. And our seeking God, 
right? Our, our seeking God is all about us in relationship with our Creator God, with our Savior. It's about seeking Him that we might know Him more. Because Jesus said, this is eternal life. Th this is what eternal life is about. Eternal life is about knowing the one true God and Jesus Christ whom He sent. This seeking of God is a result of the fact that God sought us. Listen to 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. If you have your Bible, you can, if you can turn there. Uh, if not, just listen. But 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. John, also writing this, this epistle, this letter, he says, this is love. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now think about that. He says, this is, you know, a lot of times we wonder, what, well, what is love, right? He says, this is what love is. He says, it's not that we loved God. It's, right, it's not that we were seeking after Him, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Right? God has offered and initiated a relationship with you. Right? God took the initiative. Jesus took the initiative when He came from heaven to earth. Right? Jesus came to seek and to save, the Bible says, those who were lost. Right? Our God is a God who desires that men and women and boys and girls would know Him and experience relationship with Him. And Jesus' life and His death and His resurrection make that possible. It's what makes the message of, of Jesus it what makes the message of Jesus so distinct, right? There's, there's all kinds of religions and religious beliefs and spiritual beliefs. But there was none like Jesus because not only did Jesus proclaim that He was the way, He proclaimed that He would die and rise from the dead. Right? Because anybody can show up and say that they're God. Anybody, you know, anybody can say they're the Messiah. And lots of people actually did. But only Jesus, right? Only Jesus said, I will die and I will rise from the dead. And he accomplished that. And we have historically reliable documents that point to the reality that Jesus really did rise from the dead. And because of that, because of that, you and I, through faith in him, through belief, we can experience not just forgiveness of our sin, right? Like, that would just be amazingly enough, right? right? Because one thing we can, like, we all come from different backgrounds, Right? We all come from different places, different experiences, different pasts, different stories. None of our stories are exactly the same. But one thing we all have in common is sin. Right? Every single one of us have rebelled against our Creator. Every single one of us have sinned. Right? That's something we have in common. Right? But Jesus came to bear that sin for you and for me and to offer us forgiveness and to offer us relationship with Himself. That sin is a barrier, but Jesus broke down that barrier. He lived the life that you could not live, right? Jesus lived a perfect life without sin. In your place, He lived for you. He died for you. He rose for you. And He's coming again one day for those that are His. And so in that context, right, in that view, this is eternal life, right, that they may know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. The gospel is not a call to mere religion, right? It's not just a call to ritual, Right? Rituals can be good in our faith, but the gospel is not a call to ritual. It's not a call to rule keeping. Right? Aren't you grateful for that? Now don't worry, we're going to talk about obedience before we're through. But the gospel is not a call to religion or ritual or rule keeping. It's a relationship initiated by the love of God and the grace of God through Jesus Christ. And in that relationship that God offers you, if you have that relationship, God calls you to be a seeker after Him. He, he comes through the Spirit to live in you. Right? He will never leave you or never forsake you, but He desires that in this relationship that He has initiated with you, right? God took the initiative. He desires that you would seek Him and know Him. And, and so a relationship with God is a lifelong pursuit of knowing God. Eternal life, the life of God in us is a relationship. But what does that sort of look like practically? What, do, what does that mean? How do, we, how do we sort of experience that or live that out in everyday life? Well, we're going to lear learn through those thoughts this week and talk through those thoughts this week. But I want us to just put it this way this morning. Seeking God 
And this is from, as you look at all the passages about seeking God from the Old Testament and the New Testament, we could sort of summarize as, as seeking God requires a conscious focusing of our mind's attention and our heart's affection. Seeking God requires a conscious focusing of both our mind's attention and our heart's affection. That, that if we are going to pursue this relationship that God has initiated with us, that it's going to require our mind's attention and our heart's affection. You have been called by God to seek Him, to know Him. And as I shared last night, it's, it's my desire, it's my heart that, that this week might be an experience for you. I mean, you're going to experience so much this week. You've already, how many of you, it feels like you've already been here a week? All right. It's just so much happens <laughs> in so little time. Some of you have been here a week. All right, that's normal for you to feel that way. Good point, good point. You're going to experience so much this week. You're going to be, you're going to be stretched and challenged in your music. Right? You're going to be pushed. Some of you past where you think you can go. And you're going to grow because of it. And you're going to learn. And it's going to be great. We're, we're going to have times of, of being challenged. We're going to have times of fun and enjoyment of friendships, relationships. And it, but in all those things... Right? I, I, I desire for all of us that God might birth in our hearts a fresh desire to seek Him. And that's because of relationship. You know, we're, we're, we're all seekers, right? Whether you realize it or not, you are a seeker. Everybody seeks. Right? And we seek that which what we desire, right? And, and some of the things we desire, we, we desire satisfaction. And so we may search and seek for satisfaction. We desire fulfillment. And we search and seek for it. We desire beauty. And we search and seek for it. We desire peace. And we search and seek for it. We desire joy. And we search and seek for it. We desire happiness. And we search and seek for it. All those things are good things. But if our pursuit is based on those things, we'll actually never experience what we desire. Because ultimately, the only one who can fulfill any of those desires is God. You were made in the image and the likeness of God. Right? Psalm 139, so clear about that. We were, we were formed and fashioned in the image of God. God knit you together. God purposely made you the way that you are. Right? You know, sometimes we get frustrated. How many of you ever get frustrated with yourself? Anybody? All right. That's pretty much all of us. A couple of you didn't raise your hands. I'll pray for your honesty. Right? <laughs> We, we all get frustrated with ourselves, whether it's our, our limitations, our, our failures, or our mistakes, but I want you to know that God made you just the way He wanted you. He formed you in His image. He made you after His likeness. You were created in His image, and you were created to know Him. You were designed. You are different from all other aspects of creation, right? You are different because God created you to know Him you were made by God and you were made for God. I love Colossians chapter 1. It's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. And in Colossians chapter 1, at the end of verse 16, and speaking of Jesus as the creator, right? Because Jesus is both man who came to earth, but he's the eternal God and the eternal creator. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, it says, All things were made through him and all things were made for him. You were made by God and you were made for God. And it's not until you understand that and this relationship that God wants to have with you that will ever develop a real heart to be a God seeker, to seek after Him in His ways. So what does it take to be a God seeker? Just to sort of summarize it for us this morning, three things that I want to share with you. First of all, it requires a response to God's grace. Right? You personally, for yourself, have to respond to the invitation that God makes. And many of you have but maybe some of you haven't. And it's my desire, it's my heart that while you are here, that you would see and hear and know the invitation of God. That there really is a God in heaven who made you. And that God in heaven who made you loves you. That God in heaven who made you and loves you gave His Son for you. Right? John 3, 16, for what? God so loved the world that He gave His Son. I've shared this in past years with you, so for you that are returning, you've probably heard this before. And I'll talk about my kids some this week, but I love my kids so much. I love being a dad. There's a few things better in life. And I love my kids so much. 
And, and, and I, I wouldn't, you know, I love you guys. If, if somebody came in that door right now and wanted to harm you, I would put myself in, in, in between you and them because I love you and I care about you. But what I would not do is put my children between you and them. Do you understand that? All right, it's you first, not my kids. Are you with me? All right, I, I love you, but I, I just, I don't think I could give my children for any of you. But God did. And he was willing to do that. And Jesus was willing to do that for you. And when you understand that it changes everything. I hope that if you've never responded to the invitation of the gospel, the good news, that, that this week you will hear and understand and know, and that God might give you the faith to believe, to trust Him. And that requires an acknowledgement of your sin and your rebellion. It requires a faith and a belief that Jesus died for you, that He rose from the dead, that He's coming again, and that you want Him, him to live in you, that you want to know Him. Right? It's not just about going to heaven. It's not just about being forgiven. Remember we said earlier, like, wouldn't it be amazing if God just forgave our sin? Right? You know how, remember I said, hey, that, we've all sinned? If God just forgave us, that would be extraordinary. If God just said, you know what, I won't hold your sin against you. But God says, not only do I not hold my sin against you, I, I want to lavish my love and my grace and my mercy on you. And, and one of my favorite verses, Luke chapter 12, Verse 32, and it says, Fear not, little flock, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give you His kingdom. Right? God wants you to know Him and experience Him and live in relationship with Him and in His kingdom forever. And that requires a response to His grace. And if you've never responded to His grace, I hope that while you're here, you will. And your counselors, your faculty, the staff, myself, any of us would love to talk to you about that. And secondly, it requires your mind's attention. Right, as we already mentioned, it requires your mind's attention. So I'd ask you this morning to do some evaluation. Where, where really is the attention of your mind? Where are you focusing your mind's attention? What's getting first place with your mind's attention? We'll never be God seekers until God has our attention, but not just our attention, our affection. Right? Jesus said that we were to love Him with our heart, our mind, and our soul. And that requires our mind's attention, but also our heart's affection. And so I want to invite you uh, this week to go on a journey with me. Right? Now, I'm asking God to do in my own life what I'm asking Him to do in your life. Right? And which is to reignite a passion and a desire, a thirst and a hunger to seek this God who has sought us and who has loved us so deeply and so greatly. And so I want to just ask you sometime today, before you go to bed, just do a little bit of reflection and just ask God, God, how's my affection? How's my attention? Where is it? And maybe I've got some priorities that need to be rearranged so that I can seek after this God who sought after me. I want you to know desperately how much God loves you and how amazing the relationship that he offers you. It's an eternal relationship. This is eternal life, Jesus prayed, that, that we would know the Father, that we would know the one true God and his Son, Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you this morning. Father in heaven, I thank you for uh, this new day that you've given us, this gift. And Father, I know for a lot of us, this is a day that we've looked forward to for a long time, the first full day uh, of Chehi. And Father, I thank you that you've brought us here together. And Father, I, I pray that uh, in our time together this week, Father, whether it's at breakfast or in chapel or in lessons or rehearsals, whether it's in practice or whether it's on the Frisbee field. Father, I pray that in, in all things, Father, you would be at work in our lives, drawing us and leading us towards yourself. And Father, I pray that, that you might birth in our hearts a fresh hunger and a desire to seek you. Father, I pray that you would do it in my own life, and I pray that you would do it in each camper's life, in each counselor's life, in our faculty, our staff. Father, may we have a hunger and a desire to seek you. And Father, may, may that desire come out of this incredible relationship that you offer us. Father, I pray that there would be no one here this morning that, that wouldn't understand the love that you have towards them and the desire that you have to give them relationship with you. And Father, I pray that you would work powerfully in our hearts and lives this week. I pray that we'd experience you. I pray that we'd experience your love, your joy, your peace, your grace, your goodness. And Father, I pray that you would be glorified in all. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.